Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mohammed Abdelkader, founder and, co and principal of Radio Global Advisory. I'm also a board member for the Muslim Public Affairs Council. I'm happy to be, be with you all today. Thank you all for tuning in. It's been such a great day. Great to connect with everyone. I'm so excited to see all these organizations from around the country doing great work and really engaging their communities. January 21st, January 20th, excuse me, 1961 was a cold day in Washington, D.C. The temperature was about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, very frigid. killed in Vietnam in very large numbers and come home in body bags. This war was bloody, was vicious, and seemingly had no end. It was demoralizing for the American public. A global crisis continued with the Soviet Union teetering on nuclear war. Our children would hide under their desks at schools in anticipation of an attack. Here at home, America continued to struggle with the challenges of racism and inequality, prompting African Americans to protest and engage over and over in sit-in after sit-in, demanding their seat at the table. It was far from a tranquil time in the United States. Later that afternoon of January 20th, 1961, John F. Kennedy took the oath of office to become our nation's 35th president. More than 20,000 people huddled in the cold that morning, that afternoon, on the east side of the U.S. Capitol, just a few blocks from this very building where we're all gathered today. They were there to be part of a historic inauguration. This man who, yes, was part of a political dynasty, had also been looked at with suspicion because of his faith, but he aspired to represent all Americans, regardless of his personal commitment to God. His audience reached far beyond those gathered before him on the mall. There were people listening in from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles, to Austin, to Columbia, South Carolina, and even overseas in Cairo, in London, in Mumbai, and elsewhere. In preparing for this, this historic moment, he sought to both inspire the nation and to send a message, a clear message abroad, signaling the challenges of the Cold War and his hope for peace in this nuclear age. During his speech, President Kennedy created one of the most, most enduring and memorable moments in American history. And Americans, all Americans, to co commit themselves to public service and the well-being of the country. Many of us know the quote, and so my fellow Americans, I ask, I ask not what your ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. President Kennedy addressed listeners around the world when he followed up by saying, my fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Not only are these words about civic sacrifice and service, they're really about the greater good and also about the fundamental principle that the sum of all of America's parts are great. America is, the is excuse me, the fundamental perspective that America is greater than the sum of its parts, its people, all of its people, every creed, every color, every race, and from every zip code. I'm gonna cite the words of Joe Kennedy because I feel like they captured this so eloquently. When he referred to this, this idea of service to the country, he said that her crowning achievements are ours to wear when referring to America. Her flaws and failings are ours to bear. The greatness of this country depends on the willingness of all, not just to do our part, but to hold ourselves, our government, our leaders accountable to the promises that we've made to the world. That's the ongoing work of an imperfect union. These words are about our collective action, our collective responsibility, our collective power, and our resilience during challenging times. These challenging times are not something that we have just faced now. But as many of you who have studied history know that history does repeat itself. And these cycles of challenge and resilience continue. 
many historians will draw similarities from the turmoil of the 60s to today, the geopolitical challenges, as we've seen with the Russian invasion of Ukraine recently, we we're contending with the rise of a more assertive China, the continuing racial reckoning here in the United States, and continuing conversations about inequality, racial inequality, income inequality, and so on and so forth. And more recently, we're all subjected to the challenges and the scourges, to the scourge of this global climate change will affect every single one of us. It will affect our food, our water, and our basic human security. Let's not talk about gun violence. In the last few weeks, we've seen so many young people, so many young people taken away from us far too early in every corner of the country and without any discrimination. We, as we look at the news, we can find it to be quite discouraging. It can get deflating can be depressing to see so many problems, see so great, but also to see a political system mired in gridlock, to see public discourse that's gone off the rails and is unproductive, and to see so many Americans disengaged and apathetic about the political process, about basic civic engagement in their communities. So many have given up. But what's given me hope, what's given me great hope, is in every corner of the country, we've seen people doing work in their communities, hand in hand, across community boundaries, across religious lines, across racial lines, with partners, with allies, to bring about the change that we all wish to see. They're all working towards the communities that we all want, where everyone feels like they have a seat at the table with dignity, with safety. Today, you've heard from experts from several amazing organizations who work in every corner of this, these United States. And they're working on your behalf, the American people. And they're working on the disparities in our healthcare system and innovative efforts to bring about better wellness outcomes for all Americans, not just for the Muslim community. You've heard about the dangers of racism and bigotry facing our communities. And you've heard from experts who are working to combat that. You've heard rich, rich conversations about justice and human rights and organizing in an inclusive way on the ground to make sure that everyone has their voice. We've heard from folks working on more representation in the census so our schools can be pro properly funded, so our streets can be properly maintained, so our water system can be taken care of in a way that serves all communities equitably and fairly. You can learn more about these organizations in the link that will be dropped in the chat boxes. So make sure to check that out. I'm sure you'll be impressed. I'm sure you'll be excited to see what they do and I hope you'll get involved. These folks are leading at every level. The leadership is not easy. And I wanna dig into that a little bit. We've glorified leadership in our textbooks and in our films. Leadership really involves long hours, very difficult decisions, and often intense sacrifice that no one person or organization should have to bear alone. Each and every one of you, each and every one of us can be a part of this effort by supporting these organizations and others to help America realize her aspiration, her ongoing aspiration of becoming a more perfect union where all pieces of this mosaic are integrated and are integral to the whole picture's richness. This is our history. And this was the intent of our founding fathers. We see it on our coins, on our currency. We see it on the seal of the United States, our motto, e pluribus unum, out of many, we are one. So don't worry, this isn't a fundraising pitch. Although if you do want to make a gift, I'm sure uh, several of the folks in the room here today and online would very much welcome your financial support because it is critical to keeping the lights on, to hiring the best talent and to retain that talent and make sure they are supported as they represent us. I hope that you'll continue to support the organizations that you heard from here today with your time, with your talent, with your treasure, but with your, also with your ideas and with your mind and with your voice. Reach out to your elected representatives because that's on your shoulders as well. That's on all of our shoulders as Americans to participate in the democratic process by reaching out to our elected representatives, 
not just here in Washington, D.C., but in your local communities and in your state capitals. And I'm talking about your city council members, your school board members, your local sheriff, every single person that is elected that represents our communities, reach out to them, engage with them. Let them know who you are and let them know you care and what issues will make a difference in your life. Stay engaged in voting, not just every four years in the presidential election that dominates our TV coverage, but in every boring state and local and midterm election because they matter too. And those decisions at a local level affect all of our lives. They affect the curriculum in our kids' schools, to the cleanliness of the water that we drink, to the cleanliness of the air that we breathe. That process is fundamental to our well being, and it's our responsibility to engage in it, all aspects of it, holistically. I want to come back to President Kennedy's timeless words Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. This country has given all of us so much. With all of its blemishes and imperfections, this imperfect union has given us all so much and so many opportunities. We are a part of this fabric. It's our responsibility to engage with it and make that imperfect union realize its vision of serving all of its people. We mustn't take it for granted. We mustn't take our democracy for granted. Recent events have shown that that's a reality that we have to all contend with as Americans. This is a work in progress. We must all together work for this imperfect union every single day. Thank you so much. I wish you all. Well.